100 players who shook the cup. Shook the cup. Rush getting it back to Dalglish, and there goes Rush again. Oh, good try. And a goal. Oh, yes. Um, little ball forward for Rush, trying to get the turn. It could still fall for him. Oh, it did. Ian Rush. Where do you start with Rushy? Rushy just the terribly bad habit of scoring goals. Goal wise, an absolute goal machine. Brilliant, favourite. Just it. I just think he was the best. And it was Whelan looking to feed off, and then Rush! Rushy's record is there to be seen. I think that says it all. I mean, the club's a record goal scorer. Hundreds upon hundreds of goals, and. You know, so many of them, crucial goals, so many absolute gems. I wouldn't have liked to play it against Dean, I must admit. And Rush! When he first came to the club, he was this funny, gangly, quiet guy who never said the boo to a goose and didn't score goals. Paisley took him to one side and apparently he said something along the lines of be more selfish, score some goals or you're out. Well, if you really did say that to Ian, that has got to be the all-time greatest team talk ever in the history of this club, because we all know what he went on to do after that. It swung in towards Rush, and a very good ball too. Oh, that's superb finishing by Ian Rush, and that's goal number 29. Once he got a breakthrough, though it took him a little bit of a time to, to break his duck, once he got off and running, there was never any stopping uh, Rushy. New straight away, he was a clap. Kraken player. Incredible, total instinctive ability to put the ball in the back of the net. It's just, just unbelievable. Rush is hovering inside the area and he's there. And Ian Rush. Oh, and on for Rush with a perfect through ball. And what a brilliant goal. It's never usually anything spectacular, but it was just the way he made, he, could, he, he opened the door for the ball to go inside. I'm here. And, he'd, and, you know, deflections, he'd, he'd be there, he'd, he'd read everything brilliantly. He had tremendous pace, tremendous pace, you know, off the, the mark, you know, he could, he could be by you, be five yards by you before you can get going. Yeah, I don't think he, he really tried to do too much outside of the box. It was all about what he did in, in terms of finishing. Uh, never really created many chances for people, but was always able to, to put the end to a, to a move in, in classic style. The rush! But more than anything, his work ethic for the team, for, a, for a such a superstar, you don't really find that that often today. A goal scorer thinks he hasn't got to run back and work, and uh, Rushy was always our first line of defence, and a lot of people forget that. Planted out by Marsh. Rush, now, if McMahon can run half the length of the pitch here, Liverpool are in again, he settles for help, he's got it from Rush. And Dibble this time cannot keep him at bay. Hardly ever offside, you know, compared to other strikers like that. He was so on it, you know. Obviously, he had Kenny Dalglish to help, and it was just him, uh, you know. It, it was, you know, Kenny scores. I mean, it was just the, the amount of goals he got. He was brilliant, and he was hardly ever injured. I mean, you're always, when you think of them team, you're always thinking of Russian Daglish, you know, the early 80s team. And I mean, if we've got uh, strikers at the moment as good as them, I think we've the league. But now from Daglish, Russia anticipated it, and how he made it play. That was a superb goal. Great sense of awareness, great movement, great pace, and great composure when you go in front of the goal. It always looks capable of setting something up for Liverpool. Craig Johnston's cross. Rush! Was that sick at Villa that night when he, he scored in the, uh, at that icy night? And here's Ian Rush. Another chance for him. Williams couldn't get to him. And that's 1-1. One, one. And Nicola is the man coming in for the header. And Rush was on the far side. Oh, what a tremendous shot. Here's Steve Nicol. Oh, and he's hovering again. There is Rush. Can't be stopped. It's a hat trick. I've got a, I've got a weird favourite, funnily enough, because uh, there was a journalist come up. He was doing a thing um, for the Mail on Sunday of all papers, 
about the way Liverpool lads were dressing at the match. And he'd come up and the journalist, um, it was Robert Elms, you know, he was a QPR fan. And it, it was around about the September of 1983. So Rushy, you know, he'd, he'd been in the team a while by then. And it started, you know, becoming the prolific, prolific marksman that we, <laughs> that we all know and love. But this uh, Robert Elms was saying, oh, yeah, but he's just a tapping merchant, isn't he? he you know, he, he never scores spectacular goals. We were playing Luton Town at home. I forget the. I think the final score was about six nil or something. But Rushy's first was just an unbelievable thirty-yard volume. It was from outside the box, and he just lashed it into the roof and net. We were stood on the cop. I just turned to Elms and went, "Nice tap in that, mate." <laughs> How he terrorised Everton, and then obviously you know the, the, there are so many great memories, and um, you know you couldn't you couldn't let the uh, the four Goodison Park go un unmentioned. Rush to his left, onside, Ian Rush, one 0 Liverpool, brilliant goal. Rush, deflection, has taken it in. Douglas, look at that, rushes through. This could be history here for Ian Rush if he scores. He's at the post. He might score now. He has. And this is where Liverpool have made the game look so easy. They've come out of defence, got into their stride, and seem to get an extra man through. It's Ian Rush. Can he score his fourth? It looks as though he has. Yes. Five now. I think that was really when he sort of embedded himself into into our conscious. You know, not only did we absolutely play them off the park. But he, you know, he scored four, you know, and I think everybody just loved the man if he'd never scored another one after that, you know, what a hero. The, game, the goals against Everton in the uh, cup final, it's a lot of goals against Everton. They've quickened the pace up now, Liverpool. Now Mulby. Now Rush. Yes! 1-1! One, one. Now Gleish is making a run for him. One player's gone tumbling. And it's played across for Rush. Every time there was a derby, I remember I was standing in the Gladys Street one time and the Evertonians were like, oh, Rushy's got the ball, oh, Rushy's got the ball. And I'm like, go on, Rushy, go on. And he's, he's always never let you down, put it in the net. I mean, they were so glad to see the back of him. Because when he went, I, I was gutted. You know, I was like, you can't do that. Not anyone else, but not him. And then when he came back and he hadn't learned a word of Italian, I was made up. Deep down, everybody knew that because of the way Rushy is, he's a, he's a sort of family man and you know, likes his own friends or something, that he wouldn't really settle in Italy. And I think is it proved right, because he was only away a season and then come back. Because I think I was on holiday when I was in um, Menorca or somewhere in the summer and we got the papers and said, Rush is, is going back to Liverpool and it was like, couldn't wait to get home, you know. I was made up when he come back. I remember, remember just the slight headline on the teletext coming in one day and slicking the text on and saying, Rushy back at Anfield, and I thought he was coming back for a testimonial or something. Because the headlines were that sort of small. And they said, no, Ian Rush had signed for Liverpool, back for Liverpool for three million. Everybody was made up. Remember the, the T-shirts, Nightmare on Gladys Street is back or something. You know, they, they were selling the T-shirts outside the ground. And, you know, he came back to haunt them again. Oh, there's Rush in there. Rush! Go! Ian Rush! Liverpool back in front. Barnes. Rush! A whippet and a, one of the best muzzies in footy. What I like about Ian Rush is that bizarre combination of this funny, spindly little guy with a tash. He had one of them tashes, you know, like them dirty top lips. It wasn't like a moustache, it was like he'd been eating licorice all day in Chester. To be honest with you, if you didn't know any different, you'd think, well, you know, he's not going to be a threat, is he? <laughs> At the end of the 90 minutes, how many teams walked away just thinking, again? Space is opening up all the time for Liverpool. Dean Saunders goes again. Michael Thomas, Ian Rush! It's the perfect Liverpool FA Cup final goal from one of their all-time greats. Ian Rush, maybe your all-round complete centre forward because the man had run, defend, he was pacey, he was athletic, he could put the ball in the net. Wilkins goes across to try and perhaps get a tackle in, but Nickel to Barnes, back to Nickel. And now Rush. Oh, and Seaman was beaten by the power of it. Ian Rush. And give him a chance in the 18-yard box, uh, he, he would take it.
and uh, I'll put him high in my list as, as goal scorer, I must admit. Rush let it run for Beersley, on again, in Rush! Oh, I mean, the amount of goals that lad scored, and uh, he was just a, he's just a legend, really is, where the goal scorers go. Ian Moldy to John Barnes, a little thick and a good one, to Rush! Ronnie Rosenthal, red nap for the cutback, Rush! A moment of history for Ian Rush. This genuinely great goal scorer now leads the Liverpool list. Well, it's, um, it's incredible really, I think, uh, to come in the top ten was a, is a great achievement, but to be third, it's something, um, you know, it's a great feeling. and. For me, it's um, the supporters have, have always been good to me. Even when I played, uh, you know, they sing my name and uh, you try to repay them by scoring goals. But uh, when you finish playing football, you just move on because um, you no know, Liverpool football clubs are the biggest thing now, and uh, there's different players, uh, quality players come through as well. So to be voted uh, number three uh, with all that many um, that many amounts of supporters is is, uh, is an incredible feeling for me. When you look back on your Liverpool career, why do you think you had such a special rapport with the fans? I think obviously scoring goals uh, that that come uh, into it, but I think um, I always thought to myself, no, I, I worked hard when I didn't have the ball, and I think I was brought up in Liverpool that way. Is, um, even though I was I scored goals, my job was uh, to try and defend from the front, and I think the supporters here, if you give if you give hundred uh, percent, that's all they ask for you, and uh, they don't they don't ask for anything else as long as you go on that pitch, give hundred percent, and I felt I gave hundred percent when I played. And say so I was lucky enough to have played with great players as well, and I think that helped me. But um, for me, it's just uh, scoring goals. I think um, I try to repay him by scoring goals. Obviously, you shook the cop on many occasions and for many different reasons, but uh, the main one being scoring goals, as you say. What was it like to score a goal and in front of that cop? It was um, it's incredible. It went from I think the very first goal I scored um, for Liverpool was in the cup in the cup area in the European Cup tie. I think I'd come on a sub and. I think we were playing the Finnish team, um, and I just managed to tap one in for about two yards. And uh, no, I went on to score like uh, quite a lot of them, and it was, it was an incredible feeling. When you actually scored, the adrenaline was, was flowing, and my job was I want to get back and score again. Because uh, I think when you see the delight in the supporters, when you score a goal, you see the faces and the delights, I think it gives you a great feeling. But for me, my job was to score goals, and uh, when, I scored, I, when I scored one, I wanted to score two, and when I scored two, I wanted to score three, because, simply because um, no, the supporters were no, fantastic. So when you look back over your Liverpool career, what would you pick out as the highlight? I think really, for me, most probably, you know, I, I don't have the best goals because uh, I, rem I remember them all, but uh, for me it's a game, and it's Everton in 1986 FA Cup final. Uh, because for me it's like everything rolled into one where you know, it was the first, my first FA Cup final and I dreamed of scoring the winning goal in the FA Cup final as a kid. I, you know, I wasn't winning the league, I was dreaming of you know, scoring the winning goal in the FA Cup final. And it was... Um, it was the year we'd done a double. We just won the league, and we're playing, and also we're playing Everton. You now the first Merseyside derby to play at Wembley, and I think at the time then uh, Liverpool and Everton were most probably one and two uh, best teams in Europe. And to be losing half time, Gary Lineker scores a goal. To be losing there and coming in half time, and Ronnie Moran having a bit of a go with us, we went back out, and you now we won three one, and I scored two goals, and it was one of them. Uh, I I know one thing. I didn't go to bed that night. <laughs> The two players that are left to be voted for it's Steven Gerrard and Kenny Daglish. In your opinion, who would get number one out of them two? Well, um, obviously uh, for me it's got to be Kenny because uh, simple reason that uh, he was. Uh, I was lucky enough to play with Kenny and uh, he made a lot of my goals and I had a good um, partnership with Kenny. And I think Kenny because he's done it as a manager as well. I think uh, playing wise, Gerrard is, is a fantastic player and I think Steven Gerrard will get better. I think there's more to come from Stevie G.